Hey everyone, I'm Chester C., one of the founding partners of the Yam Yam F Network, and this is the talented David Henry Huang, the Tony Award winning writer of M. Butterfly, and one of the most celebrated uh, playwrights working today. What you're about to watch is an adaptation of the acclaimed play Yellowface, which won an Obie, uh, Off-Broadway's highest honor, as well as was nominated for a uh, Pulitzer Prize for Drama. Thanks, Chester. Um, I'm incredibly excited that the Yum Yum F Network and Fast and Furious director Justin Lin chose my play to adapt for YouTube. Now, this is the first ever uh, direct-to-YouTube adaptation of a play, and that's also incredibly exciting. Using nine actors playing multiple roles, director Jeff Liu has taken an innovative approach to this adaptation, which combines elements of theater, film, and YouTube to create a unique hybrid, which I hope everyone will enjoy. Well, I can speak on behalf of everyone at Young and Math that we are excited to be presenting something that is just so new and so different. Uh, what you're about to watch is the first part, or Act 1, of his play, Yellowface. Uh, and tomorrow we'll release the second part, or the final act. So, without further ado, we present the world premiere of Yellowface. Email received January 30, 2006 from Marcus G. Dolman to David Henry Huang. One night in Shanghai, a city so futuristic it makes Blade Runner look quaint, uh, another Weigerin, another foreigner, told me where I could find the soul of China. He described this amazing village that he just visited and a minority tribe called the Dong. I flew to the provincial capital of Guiyang traveled 10 hours by bus over roads, barely paved, potholes the size of phone booths. As we climbed upwards, there were rice fields everywhere. Terraces carved into the mountainside thousands of years ago. At last, we arrived at a village called Jensong. And as soon as I stepped off the bus, I heard a song. The Dong call their music Dog, the big song. Melodies that can only be sung by the entire village together. The Dong have a saying. Rice feeds the body, the song feeds the heart. That was the first of Marcus's emails to me. Many Asian Americans wonder what happened to him. As for my own part in the story, some noticed, but they chose to forgive me for my mistakes. This is playwright Frank Chin, and David Henry Wong is a white racist asshole! Well, most of them did anyway. I was a respected figure in the community. The first Asian playwright to have a play produced on Broadway. I even appeared on national television with Lily Tomlin. And the 1988 Tony Award for Best Play goes to... Oh. M. Butterfly. Author David Henry Wong, producer Stuart Ostro, and David Geffen. From Mickey Rooney playing Japanese in Breakfast at Tiffany's, to Bruce Lee being passed over in favor of David Carradine for a TV series called Kung Fu, Asians have been routinely caricatured, denied the right to play even ourselves. Well, it's a new day in America. We're entering the 1990s, and all that stops now. Hello. Hi, David. It's BD. Oh. Uh, BD Wong, Tony Award winning star of Ben Butterfly. Hey, Brad, what's up? Have you heard about this whole Miss Saigon business? Uh, you mean the musical in London? 
Jonathan Price is playing an Asian pimp. Yeah. Ross Chow saw it there, said his eyes are taped up and everything. That would never happen here. Well, they're bringing the show to Broadway. Yeah, but this is America. They're not gonna cast a white guy here. They have. It's Jonathan Price. The producers are saying they conducted this worldwide talent search and they couldn't find any Asian qualified to play the part. They can't do that. That's what a lot of us think. Yellow face in this day and age? It's, we it's... thought if you'd be willing to write a letter to the union. Oh, you bet I will. Trust me, they're not gonna get away with this. Dear Actors' Equity, today I learned some news which left me feeling surprised and dismayed. New York Times, July 13, 1990. Miss Saigon casting protested. Asian Americans complained about the casting of a Caucasian in one of the show's principal Asian roles. The award-winning playwright David Henry Wong in Butterfly registered his complaint in a letter sent to Actors' Equity. I had dared to suppose that the yellow-faced days of Fu Manchu and Charlie Chan had long been relegated to the closets of historical kitsch. Mr. Price is an excellent actor, but I would be equally dismayed were I to learn he was cast as an African-American character like Boy Willie in August wasn't the piano lesson. Actors' Equity Union took my side in the casting dispute and arranged a meeting with the Miss Saigon team, including... Cameron McIntosh, producer, Miss Saigon. Then he left casting director, Miss Saigon. Bernard Jacobs, president of the Schubert Theatres. The goal of it. The sheer hypocrisy. This is all because B.D. Wong wants a job, isn't it? The fact that you've made a public spectacle of this issue. How can you support such a blatant restriction of artistic freedom? If you know of any Asian actor who'd be right for the part, 40 to 50 years old, classical training, worldwide status, please give me his name. We have searched literally around the world. Actually, I contacted John Lone, star of The Last Emperor, and uh, he said that he had his manager contact your office to say he was interested in the part. No one had ever called him back. This man is trying to stir up trouble. That's why you sent that letter of yours to the papers. No. The atmosphere is poisoned. Unless conditions improve, I don't see how I can bring the show into New York. New York Times, August 8, 1990. Actors' Equity Union bars white in Asian role. Washington Post, August 9th. The Broadway production of Miss Saigon has been canceled. Producer Cameron McIntosh announced today. It has certainly never been my intention to see a show canceled. I simply felt that an important point had to be made, and this has clearly been achieved. New York Times. Last night, Equity received a petition from 150 of its members to reconsider its decision. New York Post. Asian American and other protesters demonstrated yesterday in Times Square, demanding that Equity stick to its decision. The Daily News. Yesterday, a scuffle between opposing camps in the Miss Saigon dispute broke out in the lobby of Actors' Equity's offices. Pressure is mounting on Actors' Equity. Frank Rich, chief drama critic, New York Times. Jonathan Price's brilliant performance is as essential to Miss Saigon as Joel Gray's was to Cabaret. Perhaps even more. Former New York Mayor Ed Koch. Now it's Actors Equity playing the censor. Talk show host Dick Cavett. The bonehead decision of the year. Washington Post, August the Daily News. The Broadway production of Miss Saigon has been changed. Former New York Mayor Ed David, I've already left a couple of messages. We need you down at Actors' Equity offices tomorrow at noon to... Carla Chang, actress and political activist. Carla, hi, it's David. Screening calls. No, no, just washing my hair. Equity Council is meeting tomorrow to reconsider their decision. We're holding a rally at noon. You come down, we'll give you a placard, the press will take a few pictures. Carla, and... I don't think I can make it. What do you mean? We have a chance to stop Yellowface forever. Yes, it's, but, but the, the artistic freedom thing, it's it just, between you and me, 
This is starting to make us look bad. Look bad? This is our Rosa Parks moment. We need you tomorrow Why? to come. Why do you need me? Because your name the papers recognize. Exactly. It's it's my name out there. It's it's my face in the papers, the poster boy for political hey, correctness. I wish it were mine. <sighs> Carla, I can't make the rally, okay? Hey, I'm doing what I think is best for the cause. New York Times, August 17, 1990. Actors' Equity Union reverses Saigon vote and welcomes English star. English star. English star. English star. English star. Hello. Dave. Oh, hi, Dad. Uh, listen, I'm a little busy right now. Doing what? I'm, writing, I'm trying to write a new play. Good idea. What's that supposed to mean? I said it was a good idea. Dad, it's only been three years since M. Butterfly. But you've been smart, keeping your name in the paper. That's good, son. I mean, all that Miss Saigon business? Thank God, it's finally starting to die down. But so many articles on you, free publicity. But everyone disagreed with me. <laughs> everyone. All the big shot guys. Here's my fever. You saved all the articles. <laughs> I am ashamed of my union, actors' equity. Oh, yeah, Charlton Heston. And that Miss Saigon, such a big hit. Oh, Dad, don't remind me. Uh, uh, the, that producer, well, what's his name? Cameron McIntyre. Yeah, he talks about the show, so beautiful. A young Vietnamese girl gives up her baby to find a better life in America. Actually, she dies. Wow. She kills herself so her child can find a better life in America. That's even more beautiful. Can you give me some tickets when I uh, go to New York next month? Dad, I protested the show. What's the difference? That mackerel. Macintosh. Macintosh. He knows how much you've done for him. And I'll tell you something, he's grateful. Sure, Dad, I'll get you tickets. I'll get your friend tickets. Anyone you know who can't get into Miss Saigon, just, just have him give me a call. Yeah, OK, and I'll tell you another thing. You know why it's such a big hit? Not really. Because it's real. A Vietnamese prostitute falls in love with some white soldier and then kills herself so her child can come to America? You don't know how much people want to come here. When I see that girl, I think she's like me. You killed yourself? No, but I would have. That's how much I wanted to come here. Even though I didn't know anything about America other than what I saw in Shanghai at the movie house, even then, I knew my real life wasn't the one I was living in China. Second son of a cheapskate father who didn't even know how to talk to his children. I knew that was a fake life, and my real life was here. All those movie stars, Humphrey Bogart and Clark Gable and Frank Sinatra, they were the real me. So when I finally got here, I kept on pushing. Until one day after I started the bank and it became a success, I looked around at my office on the 39th floor. My house, the swankiest part of San Marino. My Mercedes, my kids, all in top colleges. And I thought, now, I am finally living my real life here in America.
That's why the girl kills herself. Because if she could see your real life, and it's someplace else, then what's the point? If you lose hope, you will ever get there. If you kill yourself, it doesn't matter. Dad, I got a... What? I think I know what I want to write about. Really? Yeah. Well, good. Good, 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 good. Take a look at this face on the cover of the magazine. Do you see a Chinese American, Asian American, plain American, or someone in yellow face? Does any of this really matter? These are some of the questions raised in David Henry Wong's new farce, Face Value. Is race a construct which is still useful or is it mythological? New York Times, October 23, 1992. The new play was described by Mr. Huang as... A comedy of mistaken racial identity. Which was inspired by the fracas over the casting of Jonathan Price as a Eurasian pimp in Miss Saigon. It's a backstage farce about a musical in which the lead actor is a Caucasian playing an Asian. On opening night, two Asian-American protesters sneak in to disrupt the proceedings dressed in whiteface. He stole my job. He stole all our jobs. You know, I really know I could have brought some truth to that role. In this day and age, a Caucasian playing a Chinese and in that horrible musical, it's racist, sexist, imperialist, misogynistic. And, and I didn't even get an audition. Neither did I. Damn them. Thank you. That was amazing, wonderful. What an audition. Thank you so much. It's not right either. There must be more Asian male actors out there. How about BD? I just don't, I just don't see BD in this one. But we're looking for a fresh young Asian face that we can make into a Broadway star. For M. Butterfly, we were looking for Chinese transvestites who can sing and dance. We found lots of those. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> Why is this so much harder? All we're looking for is a straight, masculine, Asian leading man. I'll tell Miles to keep looking. Well, tell him there are hundreds of masculine, Asian leading men out there. Dozens. He keeps asking if you know any. Is that my job? Tell them to scour the country. Somewhere out there. Our bright young star is waiting for us to find him. Miles Newman, casting director, Face Value. A friend who lived in Marin sent me a newspaper article about this new Asian American play, Go For Broke. I didn't get to see it, but the reviews were fantastic. The Lost Battalion, 36 infantry from the Lone Star State. The trapped? Pinned down, crouts on all sides. Look, I'm not gonna lie to you boys, this is a suicide mission. To call it anything else would be a damn lie. Lieutenant Grayson, I'm not sure I can do this. Sergeant Wadanabe, do it for your country. For America? Where I'll always be a foreigner? And even before the war, people would ask me, where are you from? And I'd tell them, Stockton, California. And then they say, no, where are you really from? And now to them, I'm just another enemy Jap. Hey, Sergeant, let's talk turkey. When headquarters first assigned me an all Japanese American battalion, I was a typical Texan. I thought all you boys were the enemy. But now, I have never seen a finer group of Americans. You're right. This is our chance to show the world we're loyal Americans. My parents' generation, the Issei, they have a saying, Shikata Ganai. It means, can't be helped, nothing to be done. Well then, Shikata Ganai to you too. You ready, boys? Go for broke! One of the actors, Rodney Hadamia, We'd already auditioned him. But the other guy, Marcus G. Dahlman, okay, sure, his name doesn't sound Asian, but as you well know, that doesn't mean anything nowadays. The producers agreed to fly him out for an audition. My first thought when Marcus walked in the room was, well, it's obvious he's not 100% Asian. Because of equity rules, you can't just come out and ask an actor his race. 
but over the years, I'd become pretty good at getting to the truth of an actor's ethnicity. So, Marcus, where are you from? Uh, actually, I'm from Seattle. Oh, Seattle, that's a diverse town, isn't it? Sure. Do you know it? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so impressed with the vitality of the Asian community there. Yeah, it's great. Yep, Cherry Blossom Festival, Chinese New Year's Parade, y you know? Sure. Oh, so you've been? Yeah, yeah, as a kid. Ah, yeah, the, the Filipino community there, they must have some big annual of their own, right? I mean, I'm, I'm so ignorant, I don't... Sorry, I, I can't... Or the, the Indians, do they have some... Uh, or the Vietnamese? Koreans? Hmong? I'm not sure what... Do you speak any foreign languages? Uh, is, it, is it needed for the part? No, no, I was just... <laughs> Good, because I'm still struggling with English. Really? <laughs> no, 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 it was a... A joke! Was, yeah. <laughs> I got it, I got it, yeah. You see, Marcus, I I'd like to be direct. Okay. We are... How do I say this? Oh, God, we're looking to cast this role with an Asian. As you should. So that's all right with you. I mean, my background's so mixed up, it's, it's, it's hard to tell. I mean, my, uh, my father's Jewish, and, you know, some people believe the lost tribe of Israel ended up in China. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I actually, I spent a lot of time in the International District. Uh, the Issei, the, the Nisei, the old timers. Yeah, they told me their stories. It's, uh, you could say, uh, help make me who I am today. Shikata Ganai. Shikata Ganai. Chinese folklore tells of a man who dreamt he was a butterfly. When morning came, the man awoke, and he realized that he is not a butterfly, but a man. He knew not a butterfly's joys and pains, but those of a man. And he could only ask himself, am I really a man who dreamt he was a butterfly, or a butterfly now dreaming he's a man? Could you excuse us for a moment, Marcus? That was amazing. He's funny, vulnerable, strong. Oh, I, I, I think he's our future star. But, but guys, does he look Asian to you? What do you mean, look Asian? Well, he doesn't seem to possess any Asian features uh, so at, at all. What exactly do you mean by Asian features? Well, he's got dark hair. But... Short, high cheekbones, slanty eyes? David. No, I gotta say, I, I find your question sort of offensive. Miles, is he Asian? Well, we managed to have a little conversation on the subject. And he's not full-blooded. He's your Asian. What, you want to start discriminating against them too? David, if our leading man, who's supposed to be an Asian dressing up in white face, if when he takes off his makeup, he still looks white, would that bother you? Well, white to who? To other white people? See, I have to cast this in a way that feels right to me. I can tell an Asian when I see one. Boston Globe, January 1st, 1993. Rehearsals have begun for David Henry Wong's new play, Face Value, which will have its pre-Broadway tryouts February 9th through 28th at the Colonial Theater. The cast includes Mark Lynn Baker and Jane Krakowski. Hey, Jane. Hey. You know, I didn't get a chance to tell you, but you're really great in the show. Thanks. You too. Really? Mm. Believe me, I work with some so-called stars who don't have half as much talent as you do. Thanks. <laughs> you know, Jen, I, I really like you. How much have you had to drink tonight? Too much. <laughs> I have to get something off my chest. Well, don't say anything you'll regret in the morning. Jane, I'm a fake. Is that all? <gasps> Welcome to the club. It comes with success. The higher you get, the more you feel like 
You don't belong there. Like they put your name on the wrong list and you somehow managed to sneak into the party. That's exactly what happened. Do you know how many actors auditioned for your part? Not enough. <sighs> Jane, that play in Marin where they found me, I was playing the white guy. Marcus, do you know what I do when I feel nervous around people? I imagine I'm playing a part. Yeah? I picture who I want to be, and then I start acting. Try it sometime. You'll be surprised. <laughs> Marcus has had a lot to drink tonight. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> I, just, I bet he never dreamed that he'd end up in a Broadway show when he was cast as a Japanese American soldier at the Marin Community Center. <laughs> Are we expecting reviews tomorrow morning? Yes. Mm. I know we have work to do, but but I, I think that the critics are going to be encouraging. Knock on wood. <laughs> oh, and David, just so you know, that show in Marin, Marcus wasn't a Japanese American soldier. No, I read an interview. He was in it. <laughs> he was in it, all right, but he was the white guy. <laughs> 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 Boston Globe, February 15, 1993. Huang's face value flops on its farce. New York Times, the critical splat in Boston of David Henry Wong's Broadway-bound face value. Unsalvageable. Now has the creative team engaged in revamping a show that was essentially judged confusing and unfunny. M. Turkey. Of course, I would have loved to have gotten good reviews, but this is the situation we're in, so we're dealing with it. I started rewriting, but this voice kept echoing in my head. But he was the white guy. But he was the white, the white guy. guy. I decided to call Rodney Hatamiya, uh, an actor who had worked with Marcus and Gopher Broke. Hello. Hi, Rodney, it's David Huang. So? How's the show going? Oh, well. Yeah, how's Marcus? Marcus is doing great. Listen, I wanted to ask... Yeah, he's one lucky motherfucker. What does that mean? Well, anyone else would have had their balls handed back to them on a plate by our community. But fucking David Henry Huang. Now he can cast a white guy as an Asian and no one gives a goddamn. Marcus is an Asian? Say what? I mean, I can tell he's not 100%. Oh, Marcus is 100% all right. 100% white. What, you mean you thought he was a... Uh... Asian? You got that half right. Oh, man. Can you imagine if this got into the papers? I mean, the leader of Miss Saigon protests cast white guy as Asian. By mistake. He's not. Huh? He's, uh, he's not, Marcus. He's not 100% white. Oh, come his, on. His father's Jewish. Last time I checked, Jewish was still white. Not necessarily. Not what? Judaism is a religion, not a race. It's sort of both, isn't it? Like the way that a wave and a particle are the same, but, but different? What? Well, Jews are both waves and particles. What the fuck are you talking about? I mean, I mean, do you even know where Marcus's Jewish ancestors came from? Russia. Siberia. Huh? Marcus's father came from Siberia. Are you sure? Because Oh, I we don't... talked about it extensively. How does that make him an Asian? Well, uh, do you even know where Siberia is? Yeah, it's near the North Pole. <laughs> it's Asia. Siberia is in Asia. Yes. Marcus's father is a Siberian Jew. Sure you're not making this all up to save your ass? Rodney, who stepped up to the line in the Miss Saigon fight? Well, you. Did I worry about saving my own ass then? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. And another thing, Rodney, I loved your audition. You did? It was so honest. That's what I love it most in the theater, is honesty. Then why didn't you cast me? Why? I, I mean, I thought I did a fucking good job too, you know, I just. It's just what I was thinking. You have? Yeah, I, in fact, I'm calling to check your availability. Uh, once the show gets to New York, we can bring you out. At first, maybe to understudy, but then eventually to take over the part. Shit, really? I, are you fucking offering me the... Of course, uh... the show would have to settle into a healthy run first. Of course. So, we all have to do whatever we can to make sure the show's a success. 
right? Right. But David, you can't fire him. What do you mean I can't fire him? For being white? That's a violation of anti-discrimination laws. How? You'd be firing him based on race. But I hired him because of his race, or at least what I thought was his race. Yeah, everyone just sort of lets that one slide. Wait, so I can hire on the basis of race, but I can't fire for the same reason? Right. Why? Because someone doesn't generally sue you for hiring them. So wait, so I'm stuck with this guy forever, no matter what? Is no, 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 of course you can fire him for any reason other than race. So Marcus and I really got to talk. No, 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 no. No, whatever you do, he can't know that you know he's white. Once that happens, then you really can't ever fire him. Shit. Marcus and I are speaking to this group of Asian American students tonight. They're gonna see right through him. Then they're gonna blow the whistle. Then I'm not ever gonna be able to fire him, and then- David, David, why don't you just do all the talking at this event? Okay, yes, I can get through this thing tonight, and then tomorrow we can get rid of him. Be out of your life forever? So, as long as I help Marcus pass as an Asian, then I can still fire him for being white. Right! Welcome to the Asian American Resource Center. I'm Gish Jen. Marcus, I've been doing some thinking. Yeah. I am so pleased to see you all at tonight's event. How about your name? An evening with the creators of Face Value. Marcus G. Dolman, have you ever thought about taking a stage name? Please oh welcome. Boy. David Henry Wong and Marcus, Marcus G. Everyone. Your play. Hey, you guys did a beautiful thing, man. Oh, thank you very much. And when I read the reviews, I was like, shit, man. They're doing it to us again. Just tell it, brother. They can't stand to see the yellow man get too much power in their world. You got that right. So they have no choice but to shut us down. You. And Spike Lee, man. Mm, yeah. Spike, thank you. Hey, yeah. w when did you see the show? Oh, I, I didn't need to see it to know what was going on. You can tell just by reading the reviews? Exactly. When I saw these white critics just beating on your show, uh, I knew you had something great. You can really see through the hype. But yes? Uh, I, I saw your show two nights ago. Yes? Yes. And it was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just had one question for Marcus. What are you anyway? You mean, what is he really? <laughs> uh, well, you know, my, my uh, racial heritage is all mixed up, actually. Um, uh, lots of people say the uh, lost tribe of Israel. He's Eurasian. I mean, that's, that's really the bottom line, isn't it, Marcus? Yeah, yeah I guess. Yes? So. Uh, Marcus, your ancestors, at least on your Asian side, where are they from? Siberia, aren't they? Uh, They're uh, Russian, Asian, Siberian Jews. Aren't they, Marcus? Yeah, yeah, sure. Siberian, wow. Um, and Siberians are Asian? Well, look, uh, Siberia, as you can see, is just north of China. Perhaps the most well-known Siberian is model Irina Panteva. Here she is in the latest issue of Cosmopolitan. Well, yeah. Um, na nowadays, we don't all look alike. Looks don't really matter anymore. Marcus, like us, is an American. I guess my question uh, for Marcus is, uh, as a Siberian, Russian, uh, Asian Jew, was growing up hard? Uh, yeah. Um, well, when I was seven, my parents moved into this fancy neighborhood because it had better schools. Uh, so I essentially became a poor kid in town. I know what that's like. You do? <laughs> wow, thank you. <laughs> Bastards. Well, see, the, the kids all knew the truth about me, so... On the outside, I was trying really hard to be like everyone else, but on the inside... You knew they were looking down on you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. This is... Sorry, I've never... And in public like this... Marcus, we've all been oppressed. By the bastards. <laughs> now, now you say it. Me? No. No, man. You gotta say it. It's the only way you're gonna rise up. It, it was subtle. It, I mean, it wasn't like... It a... might be subtle. But it's still racist. Come on, man, you gotta say it. Uh, uh, okay. Bastards. Right. Those motherfuckers who made us feel like shit, they are... Bastards, you're right. They were mean little bastards. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't that feel 
look good, Marcus? It really does. This is incredible. You guys don't even know me, and, and you're accepting me into your club. Community. Community. It, you know, it really, it feels like I've found a home. We love you, brother. I hope you know how lucky you are. Out there in the rest of America, everyone is on their own just trying to stay afloat, and you guys, you have each other. No, we have each other. Marcus G, you're a role model to us all. I wouldn't even be here today if I hadn't had the good fortune of getting cast in a play by David Henry Huang. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Stuart, sorry to call so late, but do you think BD's still available? I don't think Marcus is working out. Yeah, okay. David, it's Marcus. Uh, can we talk? I, I just got a call from the producers. This is kind of important. Call me, please. Uh, look, it's a... Uh... It's just really important that you and I talk. Okay? Like, I assume you know what's going on, and if this is what you want, I understand. I'd, I'd just like the chance to hear from you. It's Marcus. I'm at Logan Airport. My flight starts boarding in 20 minutes. It's final call. I'm heading back to San Francisco. I just wanted to say thank you. I, I got to work with some really wonderful artists and, and maybe even through everything that happened, understand a little bit better who I am. Talk to you sometime, okay? Associated Press, March 15, 1993. Face value, the new Broadway comedy, by the author of M. Butterfly, closed before its official opening, shutting down after eight preview performances at a loss of more than two million dollars. Hello. Would this be Margaret Fung, director of the Asian American Legal Defense and Education Fund? David? Yeah, it's David Huang. David Henry Huang. David, are you drunk? No. No. Maybe a little. Listen, I don't know if you know, but my show, it kind of, it kind of close. Yes, you told me last night. Do you still think I'm an Asian American role model? David, it's 2 a.m. I Margaret, mean, isn't there somebody I... else you can call? I mean, we hardly know each other. It's, it's, it's just that I always thought that as civil rights, as far as civil rights attorneys go, that, that, um, that you're kind of hot. I'm going to hang up now. But Margaret, I... David, yes, you are still an Asian American role model. Good night. Hello? Ah, hello, son. Hi, Dad. I'm just calling to see how you're doing. Great. I'm doing great. And how are things, uh, money-wise? Dad. Uh, you know, I wanted to tell you, I just gave a big donation to your friend, Bill Clinton. Dad, he's not my friend. I just... Oh, you supported him, didn't you? I spoke to one of his guys from his office. I told him that I wanted to start a new group. Chinese Republican bankers for Clinton. That is great, Dad. Listen, I really can't uh, think about this right now. Son, uh, why don't you come on the board of my bank? What? Well, Marty DeLuca just died, and there's an empty space to fill. What would my title be, Director of Nepotism? If that's the title you like, fine, you can have it. 
Dad, I am completely not qualified. You're my son, aren't you? And you know, we pay our board members honorarium for attending meetings. Just a few thousand dollars, but it's better than nothing. Dad? And maybe you'll decide you like banking. Just out of curiosity. Eh? Is that a few thousand dollars per year or per meeting? I need a motion to approve the budget. So moved. Second. Second. Oh, second. That's good, son. He is learning fast. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed. OK. <laughs> we found office space right in the center of Beijing, a brand new building. Beautiful. Henry, congratulations. This is a big deal. I feel so excited, like, like a pioneer, a, a, a Yankee trader. <laughs> Beatrice. On Monday, we're putting out a press release to announce the opening of our Beijing office. Far uh, East will become the first American bank to do business in the People's Republic of China. <laughs> yes. <laughs> After I signed the lease, our new landlord took me to a karaoke bar. I guess what I sang, you'll never guess. My way. That's right. They were so moved. It was beautiful. Meeting adjourned. Oh, David. The wife and I went out last night to a musical show. Oh, oh, great, great. Uh, what'd you see? The King and I. And David, the guy who played the King, you know him. I, I know a lot of Asian actors. Uh, what was his name? What was his name? Uh, he was in one of your plays. Oh, uh, which one? Uh, f f face, face, the, face the facts. Face are you? Yes, yes. B.D. Wong is in The King and I? No, no, that wasn't his name. But uh, who else could it? No. He had the Chinese name. It can't be. Strange thing, though. He didn't look very Chinese. We hope you're enjoying that so far. Uh, make sure you, that you tune in tomorrow for the finale. Uh, but in the meantime, leave us some comments in the section below. What do you think about a play coming to life in the form of a YouTube video? We'd love to hear what you think. And be kind. And be kind. <laughs>